We're now gonna do the bracings on the front. So we've already done them on the back. We'll set that aside. And we've already had, put our rosette here. So on the back side of our front, we're gonna add our bracings. And if you look at our pattern here, where they're going, so we've got two cross bracings here. There's two small little bracings. And then you've got your three bracings here. And there's also a little bridge patch we're gonna add as well. And I've traced this onto a little clear plexi. So this allows us to line this up on our board and just kind of get your sound hole lined up where it's at. And then there's some holes drilled on the very ends and just take a pencil or something and trace all the little holes where they're at. And we'll just connect the dots after we trace these holes to where all your bracings need to be. We got all of our circles traced, and it's again, it's kind of hard to know which circle goes where on some of these. Uh, so use a straight edge when you're connecting the dots here. You're connecting the top and the bottom of each of these lines that you are tracing for each bracing. Take your time with it, make it nice and neat, and straight. So when you go to glue these, we can keep everything nice and straight. Again, you're drawing two lines for each bracing. So we're just getting all of our bracings drawn where they're gonna be attached. I've got some pre-cut bracings and these pre-cut bracings are going to be for your front and I've got some patterns here as well that you're going to use um, and they're all numbered one two three four five and then this is six and seven if you're looking at your front pattern I've got those same numbers here so this is bracing number one two three four five and then six and seven are these little ones up here and so uh, they're labeled with what size they are. So like number one is a 5 16 by 7 16 And again, I've got pre-cut boards for that. And so that's this stuff here. You should already have, it's already 5 16 wide or th thick and 7 16 wide. And so you should be able to just get that traced on here. Number two is the same exact size, 5 16 by 7 16 So you should be able to get that out of here as well. Go ahead and just trace these and we'll go to the bandsaw, cut them out. And then again, using those sanders, the horizontal belt sander or the vertical belt sander to shape these bracings. For your three, four, five, six, and seven, we're using some bracings that are three sixteenths by a quarter inch. And that's what this whole pack is here. So you can take some of these. And again, you'll notice the thickness and the width on these to get the three sixteenths by quarter. And it should be the same height if you know in which direction whether it goes this way or this way so just look at the pattern and get it the same height so get those traced you might be able to get multiple on each stick remember number six and number seven you need one of each one for number six and one for number seven on that now, and try not to be wasteful so when you get your patterns traced, using as much of this bracing as possible. Okay, now your bridge patch, I have another pre-cut bundle here, and this is some maple, um, and it's about an eighth inch thick and just go ahead and just however long that is, I believe it's about six inches long. Yep. And we're just going to trace however long that is there. And just chop that off and we'll just round over the corners just to make our little bridge patch. The shape of this bridge patch really doesn't matter. You could leave it square if you want or round the corners. Um, again, we can cut that off on the bandsaw, that little piece, and then just round over the corners on the sander. Now 
Now we can bandsaw that. Honestly, you could just go to the sander and just sand that shape if you want. If I do bandsaw, I'm leaving my line. And we're just getting it close to the line when we're cutting this. And we're gonna do the rest of the shaping on the sander. So like these ones, I'll probably just shape that on the sander. I'm not even gonna try to cut that on the bandsaw. I'm just gonna do all my shaping on the sander. And again, your bridge patch. Just cut off a six inch section that you need. And we're just gonna round over the corners on the sander. And we can use this vertical belt sander with this top just opened up over the top section here to do some shaping. You could also use the horizontal belt sander for this. And if you remember when we did our back bracings, same concept here, we wanna just smooth them up, but also we want each one to curve up and make it more rounded. So I, I do like to draw some kind of center line on here. So I know sanding it up on each side, kind of just like a, just a curve up on that. And just watch your hands on the sander or you can just kind of rock it back and forth and then get the other side, you know, holding your fingers out of the way so you don't get hit on the sandpaper. Now, if you look at this, again, we're just trying to curve it up a little bit. Just kind of have some nice swooping ends. These bracings, again, have two purposes. One, to give it some strength and structure, but also it helps with the sound quality. So you don't want them really bulky. The more bulky it is, the more muffled the sound quality is. So, uh, but you also don't want them too small or too light because then it's not gonna have enough strength. For your bridge patch, again, we're just going to round over the corners. So if we wanted to, you could draw this, just a rounded shape. But really, you can just sand it round. After you get them all cut, we're just going to place things where they go. And uh, you'll notice that your three fan bracings here at the bottom, they're going to go over top of our bridge patch. And they actually have to be notched. And so when we put these ones on here, where they match up and lay over top of our bridge patch. We're gonna mark that and notch it. And so I just see where the bridge patch touches it. And I'm just gonna put two little markings here on the side of my bracing. We're gonna to go to the bandsaw and we're just gonna notch that out. So I've just marked where it hits and it's not very much. Again, that bridge patch is only about an eighth of an inch thick. And so we're gonna go and just notch that out on the bandsaw so that, that will sit right on top of the bridge patch and still be nice and flat down on our board. So we're gonna do that on all three of these fan pieces where it touches on that bridge patch. Again, with everything lined up where it needs to go mark a 
little notches where we're gonna cut. So I've just marked my left side and my right side. And again, it's only about an eighth of an inch thick. So I'm just gonna draw that on my bracing. We're gonna go notch that out. I'm gonna zoom in real close here so you can kind of see what I'm doing to notch these out. Again, you gotta be real careful. We're not gonna cut through the whole bracing. We're just gonna notch that little bit. And to be honest, I don't even try to cut this direction at all. I just come straight in back out, straight in back out. And then I kind of just go back and forth motion and just kind of have the saw blade just nibble away until I get it the right depth. You'll see what I mean. Going straight in, back it up. Straight in, back it up. And then for all the middle, I just kind of just barely have it touch. And I just kind of wiggle it back and forth. Now you're very careful not to take too much off right here. And you're just using the teeth of the bandsaw to kind of nibble it closer. Just notching it out where that bridge patch is gonna fit. If you do end up breaking one, just go ahead and just trace that pattern in again on a different board and you can just cut another bracing. But do your best and go real careful, real slow, just nibbling away at this. Check to make sure that those notches actually fit over top of your bridge patch and there shouldn't be any gap here. So when that fits on top, it should fit nice and then the whole bracing should still lay flat on your actual board here. So if you need to notch a little bit more, be careful and notch a little bit more. But we're just getting them so they fit right over top. And then we're gonna use that same method with that go bar system to glue and clamp these on. The front of the ukulele is gonna be flat. So we're not using any dish at all on this one. So we're actually gonna just have a flat board underneath as we pry those sticks to wedge on here for gluing this up. So we'll take it over the go bar and get everything glued on. If there's a dish already in the go bar, what I do is I just flip it around to a flat side. And just flip that over. Just that's the flat part and that's where we're going to be using to glue all this on with and uh, again we want to just be careful get everything lined up exactly where we want it straight and nice and neat making sure your bridge patch is lined up straight as well right in the spot that it should be at so let's get some glue and you don't need too much if you put too much you're gonna to have to do a lot of wipe up of wet glue later so just a little bit Spread that so it covers the whole edge. Get things placed. Now, no one's gonna see this. It's all on the inside, but we still wanna make it look neat and nice. Again, spread that glue around so it covers the entire surface, but not so much that it's going to be dripping everywhere. Okay. Now again, once we have them all placed with glue, take these little sticks and we're just gonna pry them on here to wedge everything. I, I like to start from the top down. And do about three sticks on the long ones, maybe two sticks on the small ones. Occasionally these sticks break and if they do, it's okay, just get another stick. Just kind of carefully bend them up there. Get that nice tight pressure. I 
apply torque from the top down just so I can have room. You're going to use a lot of these sticks, but make sure each board has nice, good, tight pressure. Again, once you get them all glued on, good tight pressure everywhere, just make sure nothing's shifted. Let this dry. And also, again, make sure your name's on it somewhere. So be sure your name gets written so I know whose it is. Leave it in here for at least 30 minutes, let it dry. You can